Check the description for the following discount codes. Been a little while coming, but here's my review of the Thrustmaster TLCM pedals. They have been out a little while, so there are other reviews out there, but I know some of you like to see my take on things. So I've had them for a little while now, I've been testing them. And, um, and off the bat, let's just say straight away, they're a decent set of pedals. Um, if you've got, you know, a Thrustmaster wheelbase and a Thrustmaster shifter and you want to have the matching pedals, or um, perhaps if you're on console and you need something to plug into your wheelbase because you can't just go USB standalone like us PC uh, users can, then these are a perfectly good set of pedals. They're definitely a good upgrade from the non-low cell base Thrustmaster ones. And also, you know, if you've got Logitech stuff, perhaps you're moving from the Logitech G29 or G920 or G923 over to the Thrustmaster ecosystem. These are definitely better pedals than the Logitech ones, but they're not amazing pedals. There's nothing about these pedals that really stands out head and shoulders above what else is out there on the market even at a similar price point when we compare to say the Fnatic uh, CSL Elite low cell pedals. They are a little bit more money. Uh, I think I paid, what did I pay for these? 170 or 180 for these. And the Fnatic CSL Elite low cell pedals are about 50 quid more, 40 or 50 pound more, depending you know, where you buy them from. And, Prices do vary a little bit, sometimes you get a deal. So they are, they are you know, 40, 50 quid cheaper, depending where you're getting from than the Fnatic ones. And how should I best talk about these? Well, let's talk about, the, let's talk about the actual build quality and the features first. So initially, when you get these out of the box, you think, oh, these have got some real heft to them. They must be solid, you know, they must be really well made, good, good quality metal construction. And unfortunately, that isn't really the case. The pedals themselves, the pedal faces, and the, you know, the backs of the pedals here are metal, and you've got this very, very thin, I mean, there's probably barely even a mil sort of tread plate on the, on the bottom there for your heel. The rest of it is all plastic. And the reason they feel so hefty is because underneath this section here, um, sort of in this, this area here, there is what you could describe as like a ballast. It's a bit like, how can I describe this? When you get those sort of garden umbrellas to shield you from the sun on a hot sunny day, the base of them, you can either fill with water or you can fill it with sand to weigh you know, your, um, your umbrella down so it doesn't blow away in the wind. What they've done in the base of this is a similar thing. There's a big plastic ballast in there, either full of sand or some other media um, to give it more weight toward the front. Now, it makes it feel better than it is, is the reality of that. I don't, I don't really see how it's gonna add much to the overall functionality of the pedals. I mean, it, because you've got that extra weight spread across the bottom here, I suppose it will add a small amount of rigidity because ultimately you're gonna bolt these down you know, they're not really designed to be sat on carpet. So you're gonna bolt them down anyway, but it may help to reduce flex in the sort of forward area because there is, you know, it's, it's almost like a form of reinforcement, I suppose, but not, not you know, not, there are much better ways to reinforce them, like making them out of metal, for example. But otherwise, everything else is completely plastic, even, you know, what, what the pedals actually hinge on inside, inside these sort of areas here and there and here, they're all, the pedals actually rotate on plastic as well. Now the brake pedal has a little bit more reinforcement. I'm not gonna take them apart and show you. If you wanna see inside, look at Barry from the Sim Racing Garages review. He takes them all to pieces and you'll see what I mean. So I'm a little concerned about the longevity of metal rotating against plastic. Surely the plastic's gonna lose at the end of the day and, and wear out, but only time will tell. So that isn't the best. Um, again, if you're look, you know, looking to compare these to the CSL Elite load cells, which are pretty much 99% metal construction, obviously that's a big plus for the Fanatics and a big minus here 
for the Thrustmasters. Now, let's talk about the actual sort of pedal arms, you might wanna call them themselves. They look, I don't know whether they've done this on purpose. Let me see if I can, there's like a, it looks, the finish on them, in my opinion, looks terrible. It looks like they've been, I mean, just, if we, can, I don't know if you'll we'll focus on this. It looks like someone's just got a file and filed this edge here and here and here and, and, and put a flat on it. And if you look around, all the finish on all of it, really, really rough. And there's actually some sort of ever so slightly sharp edges in, yeah, inside the castings here. Now, I don't know whether they've gone for this look. Again, if you, you can see it on here, I hope it shows up on camera, but it just looks really cheap and nasty. I don't know if they've gone for this sort of rough look finish on purpose, or if that's just how they've produced them. I mean, I'm guessing they're cast, these pieces, in which case you wouldn't have sort of file marks, you know? So maybe they've done it on purpose, but I think it looks awful and really, really cheap. Like, like someone's got an angle grinder and just sort of, oh yeah, we need to take a bit of material off there. So all right, boys, grab the grinder. We'll just whiz that off. You know, this isn't a prototype. So I can only assume they've gone for that rugged look on purpose because otherwise, it looks awful, it looks terrible, and I, I, I don't like it. But I mean, you know, when it's fitted to your rig, you're gonna be looking at this side, and the actual pedal faces themselves look perfectly nice. And I quite like the look of the pedal faces. Um, they're, as you can see by the bolt holes, they're adjustable left and right. And there's also some up and down adjustment because there's plastic pieces behind them that can go up and down. And they can also be replaced with these slightly thicker ones here, you can see the, the extra holes to allow the up and down adjustment through the bag, I hope. But these are slightly thicker, so they will angle the pedal slightly more forward if you wanted them to. Now, aside from your up, down, left, right, and, and bringing these forward a little bit, there's no other adjustment as far as pedal position goes. Uh, the other adjustment we have is on the brake pedal itself. You can see I've got two red springs in there, and at the very bottom here, this is our load cell. Um, so as you push on the pedal, you can press the springs and it pushes on the load cell, which measures the amount of force you're applying. I personally like the red ones. They are the stiffest, um, and for me, I like a reasonably stiff brake pedal. So, and what's great about these is, they're so easy to swap out. Um, saying that, it's gonna be a little difficult one-handed, but all you do is pull this down and slide it this is gonna ping everywhere. And it just slides out like this. And then at that point, you, you move your pedal obviously out of the way and you can just lift your, your springs off and swap them out for other ones, which I'll show you here in a sec. But I like the, the red setup. For me, that's the sort of weight or stiffness I like on my brake pedal. But it, I, I love the way you do it. It is literally super simple and, and you know, took less than 10 seconds, perhaps even a little quicker if I wasn't doing it awkwardly for the camera. But yeah, you've got a, a white spring and what comes installed is two, I think one's, one's black and one's like a gunmetal gray, but I am colorblind, so you have to forgive me if that's not actually the color of the lighter one. But um, you get those, so you can swap them out, get the sort of feel you want. Now these, obviously these are load cell and this was kind of a big deal when they came out. Load cells are very cheap, the actual load cell themselves. You know, a load cell can be had, the Fanatic replacement ones are like seven pounds each, for example. So just because it's load cell, it doesn't automatically justify a heavy price. Um, so when we're looking at these and we're thinking somewhere in the 180 pound mark, just because it's load cell doesn't mean, you know, they're worth strong money or anything. The load cell interface, USB interface is cheap as well. So it's still gonna be more about the build quality the functionality and the overall experience of using the pedals that matters more than the fact that it's low sell when it comes to justifying a purchase. But um, yeah, you also get this, which way up does it go? This drilling template. So you've got your four 
holes there which allow you to drill your cockpit if you don't have bolt holes in the correct place, which is really good. Actually, there's a fifth hole in the middle and you can get some adapters from Thrustmaster to uh, allow these to fit onto other cockpits as well, which I don't have because I didn't need them. Um, it also shows you how your brake spring assembly comes apart. And a little chart here showing you your different spring, sp strength strings. Strength springs, in actual fact, uh, on the left hand side there. Uh, and it shows you the calibration tool because I guess they recommend you do that. You know, once you've swapped your springs around and got it where you want, you can then calibrate it before you actually use them to make sure your travel is all correct. And when your foot's off, the brake isn't being applied slightly and, and what have you, because there will be a small amount of preload because of those springs. So what you don't want is a load to register in a small brake input um, when you haven't actually got your foot on the brake. Now there's also some washers, it shows at the bottom here, that I think allow, is, a, is a crude form of preload adjustment. You can, you can install more washers to compress things a little bit more. I didn't actually play around with that. They're still in the bag somewhere, wherever that bag is, don't actually know. Yeah, somewhere. Um, so I didn't actually play around with those springs. I didn't feel the need to. Once I, springs, washers, once I installed my red springs, I was like, brake pedal feels great to me. That's, that's all I need to know. And that's the thing. The brake pedal does feel great. The pedals themselves, the clutch obviously is just a linear clutch. There's no sort of simulated biting point to play with or, or simulated clutch springs that you overcome in a real car. And I wouldn't expect it at this price point either. So you've just got a linear clutch. You know, the accelerator is obviously the lightest of the three. The brake pedal is the hardest and then the clutch is somewhere in between. I will say though, that the resistance of the clutch is pretty decent. It is much stronger you know, than the Logitech ones and um, the T3PAs that came before these, even, even the pros. So yeah, it feels, feels everything to use. In fact, let's, I'm gonna just pull up a little clip here. Everything to use, so here's a little clip of me actually using the pedals. To use them, they feel perfectly nice and I have no complaints whatsoever, especially for the price point. And even though, you know, the construction is mostly plastic with this huge sort of counterbalance or reinforcement weight ballast thing in the front, you know, they, they're, they're just fine to use. And if, if you get the pedals and you give them a little side to side sort of wobble to see whether there's any play, the accelerator pedal has a little bit of side to side. The brake pedal, I suppose yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this off camera, you won't see it. In fact, yeah, maybe I'll do it on camera in a minute, but there's a little bit of side to side play. But, um, but in use, you don't notice any of it. It's absolutely fine. As you can, you'll see in the, in the clip we're watching now, the pedals aren't wobbling around. I mean, I'm not the most aggressive peddler in the world. I don't left foot brake um, and I don't heel and toe because I'm just not that good a driver. But um, let me just see if I can show you the play. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to because my hand's gonna wobble. Um, any other way I can do this? Maybe on the desk. Uh, you can see them in shot there, but I don't think you'll easily see. There's a tiny little bit of play left to right, but you know, there has to be some play or clearance, otherwise they wouldn't move. And again, if you go out to your car in real life, grab your pedals, you'll find there's a tiny little bit of play left to right in real life as well. So nothing to worry about. Um, us as sim racers, we spoil often with high-end pedals that have phenomenal quality machining and really tight tolerances and, you know, over and above what you get in real life in actual fact. And again, we pay the price for those as well, also well over and above uh, what you would normally pay in real life, even for like a race set of pedals. But um, yeah, back to these. I don't have anything bad to say about them, really. The, the price point is less than the Fanatic CSL Elites. Um, they are mostly metal construction. These are mostly plastic construction. Um, they have a small amount of play side to side as well, or flex, play or flex, whatever you want to call it. Um, and they're, you know, 30 to 50 pound more expensive. So, you, you know, the question is, why would you choose these over those pedals? And I think most of the reasons are going to be going back to what I said at the very beginning, really. You're already in the Thrustmaster ecosystem and perhaps you like the look of these, you want them to match your wheelbase and your shifter. I'm a person that likes things to match. You know, I have a Fanatic 
wheelbase and pedals and shifter. I like them all to match. They just look nice together. So if you're in the Thrustmaster ecosystem, maybe you want them because they match the rest of your setup. Maybe you want them because you're on console and, the, and you have to have something that plugs into your existing Thrustmaster wheelbase, in which case these are the ones to buy. Um, or maybe your price point puts you at exactly the price of a set of these, you know, 180 pounds or whatever it was I paid for them. You know, you can't afford to stretch another 30 to 50 quid for the Fanatics. That's as much as you want to spend. Fine, go buy them. You won't be disappointed. They're, they're absolutely fine. Like I say, my only reservation is the longevity of, you know, these pivoting in sort of plastic... Uh, Plastic housings is the only thing I'm concerned about. For I think from memory, they're Hall effect sensors on the accelerator and the clutch, so you're not going. There's no potentiometers to wear out. But even then, you know the Logitech pedals that have potentiometers, they last years, they're absolutely years. And even when they start to get a little glitchy after I don't know five, ten years of use, you just go in there and you spray them with a little bit of contact cleaner, and they're usually good again. People have been using those for literally like a decade, so. Um, Having Hall Effect sensors is nice, but not essential. But yeah, from memory, these are Hall Effect sensors. I should really check first, shouldn't I? But everything works fine. Um, oh, one thing to note. If you're buying these because, like me, you have a Thrustmaster wheelbase, but you're on PC, you can't plug these into your wheelbase with the RJ12 cable if you're on PC. Your PC just doesn't recognise them. The functionality to plug these and the TH80 shifter into a suitable wheelbase and just use one USB port only works on console. I don't know why Thrustmaster have done this. Surely in their drivers on PC, they could just make it so that it recognizes your shifters plugged into the wheelbase and your pedals are plugged into the wheelbase and possibly even the, the handbrake they do, which is also a sequential shifter. I don't know why Console users get the ability to have a nice, neat, tidy setup with only one USB cable, and us PC guys have to run three or four USB cables when the wheelbase has the sockets in the back to plug them all into. It's been like it for years, so I don't think Thrustmaster are going to change their mind about it. But um, yeah, if you're buying it because you wanted a neat cable solution, that ain't going to work, just, just so you know for PC users. But otherwise, I have no problem recommending these for the price point. As I say, they are 30 to 50 pound less than the Fanatic entry level low cell ones. The Fanatic ones are all metal and these are mostly plastic, but functionality wise, I don't see any issues. Obviously, it's all going to be down to you and what you really want. But I will throw a link in the description to these eBay, Amazon, because I have no complaints about them. You know, they work just like they should. The price is roughly roughly where it should be. I mean, it would have been nice to see them a bit cheaper because they have used mostly plastic. As I say, the actual load cell isn't expensive and the load cell interface isn't expensive. So they are making a reasonable whack of profit on these because these plastic sort of preformed assemblies are certainly not expensive compared to having it made of aluminium or, or even steel. So, you know, they're doing well out of these, but they are what they are, and you know we can't we can't change that. The price of sim racing parts is what it is. But for what they are, they're decent. If you want to set for the reasons I've listed, I have no reason not to recommend them. So, as always, thank you for watching, and take it easy.